everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to So What, the Marketing Analytics and Insights live show. I'm Katie, joined by Chris and John. How's it going, guys? It's going. Doing well, doing well. On this week's episode, we're talking about shadow banning. Specifically, have I been shadow banned? Um, you know, this is this came out of our conversation on last week's live stream, which you can catch up on on our YouTube channel at trustinsights.ai slash YouTube, where we talked about how different social media algorithms actually work. And so one of the questions that comes up is, have I been shadow banned? Um, and so, John, I know you've been doing some reading about shadow banning. And so can you just sort of summarize what it is before we get into figuring out whether or not it's happening? Yeah, sure. You know, I've been following the pulse pounding Twitter files, you know, which has been the most uh, uh, least <laughs> exciting thing to go on <laughs> in, in the past four months here that we thought was going to be cool. But shadow ban actually goes way back to Reddit. If anybody has been around forever, Reddit back around 2012 ish somewhere, um, one of the lead guys there was just joking around that, you know, oh yeah, there's people that, you know, we just shut your stuff off and, you know, you think everything's running normally, but you're actually not talking to anybody. You've been shadow banned, you know, and the idea is that there's no rules behind this. Um, and so, and that has, you know, it's been kind of hijacked over the years, like that original idea of that you would be doing stuff thinking you're in the community and just nobody ever sees or reads any of your stuff has kind of been applied to everything uh, as we get people who are complaining like, well, we don't show up in the search results or, you know, we don't have, and an easy way to think of it is it's, yeah, there may be freedom of speech, but there's no freedom of reach. Like you're not entitled to get to everybody. But in most of the cases today, the users are being told that, hey, we're going to stop showing your stuff. And it, it's not that they just don't exist without their own knowledge, but everybody does still call it shadow banning just because that's cool. How are we? Did he get it, Chris? Is that straight on? It is. It is. The The challenge is, and to what John is saying, there's there's actually being acted against by the network. And mm -hmm. then there's your, your content just sucks and nobody likes it. <laughs> well, and I'm guessing uh, that, you know, Twitter or TikTok or whoever <clears throat> never says, hey, by the way, you've been shadow banned. Like, it's just this illusion of well nobody's engaging with my stuff like i see this on tiktok every once in a while where somebody will post something which almost feels kind of clickbaity of i think i've been <clears throat> shadow banned please engage with my stuff if, to know if this is happening and i'm like oh, but i i feel like you're tr you're manipulating me you're making me feel bad because you're showing me cute videos of your puppy but you're just looking for engagement numbers Mm hmm. And it's interesting um, not to drag uh, politics into this, but yesterday at the uh, House testimony uh, oversight committee testimony, um, one of the things that was discussed was former Twitter executives were, were testifying about how Twitter worked. And in that testimony, we won't go into uh, the, the political side of it, but in that testimony, Twitter executives said, oh, actually, it's the opposite. We have to we had to make numerous exceptions to our, our trust and safety rules to allow certain people who would otherwise have been, you know, uh, penalized in some way to, to continue saying what they were wanted to say. And so it, there's a lot of utility, you know, utilities and things out there that uh, claim to help you detect it, whether you're shadow banned or not. The Twitter rules, uh, and, and this is true of all these social networks, the, the, the networks publish like what happens to you if you, if you, disobey the rules like some things like it says pretty clearly here if you violate certain rules your immediate permanent suspension of the account by you're gone right mm -hmm. others like uh requiring to remove the offending tweets or temporarily limiting your ability to post to new tweets and again check the terms of service for instagram and tiktok and all these companies they tell you here's what's going to happen if you if you break the rules and it's interesting none of them mentioned we're going to reduce your reach now when twitter had its little management change last October. Um, the new owner did talk about, uh, you know, uh, we're going to we're gonna tell you human shadow banned or not and stuff, but it, it's, it's noteworthy that that has not happened. Mm -hmm. um, there has been no disclosure of that, even though new management has been in place now for what, four months, uh, five months now. It's likely because it doesn't actually exist. 
so you know what's interesting too though is um i also see the term shadow ban a lot in facebook groups where there's a moderator and someone will you know a member will say something like i don't know why my post was removed you know can the admin reach out to me to tell me um or have i been shadow banned by the admin when you know, sometimes people accidentally hit delete or, you know, to what you guys are saying, your content wasn't that good and nobody cares. Yep, exactly. Um, the other thing that, this goes back to last week's show, that people don't realize is that all of these social networks are these graph neural networks that we talked about last week, which means that your content and your being able to be seen varies from day to day based on your position within the network. So I'm going to bring up a, a very simple, simplified example. This is from the Marketing Props B2B Forum, one of our favorite conferences we were at last year. Um, and what I've done is I've, I've, I've basically made a map of who is tweeting you know, at or you know, a, a about other people. The bigger your circle is, obviously, the more you get tweeted at. But the colors on here are essentially neighborhoods, right? These are the people that you associate with most. And so you know, for example, we see me, Trust Insights, Katie Robert, and John Wall, all in that bright blue color, um, which pretty clearly indicates we talk to each other, right? Mm -hmm. In a graph neural network, these associations are being monitored all the time. And that means that if it's going to recommend your content to somebody, guess who it's going to recommend it to? It's going to recommend it to the people who are nearest to you in the network, who are the most likely to engage with it, because the networks want engagement. They want you to stay glued to the, the, the feed. They want you to consume more ads. Um, and so Nancy Harhut over here in the bright orange, she's pretty far away from me in this example graph. So the, if this was a social network, the algorithm probably would not recommend my content to Nancy all that often, right? Because she's so far away from me in, in engagement. Yeah, I know that's disappointing because Nancy is hardcore, you know, marketing stats and analytics. Of course, psychology slant on that, I guess. So it's a, it's a different crowd and she just has her own community. Um, but that doesn't mean that you've been shadow banned. It just means that mathematically you're not going to show up in her feed. And so I guess I guess one of one of my first questions for you, and I this might be a rhetorical question, is you know, are people essentially crying wolf when they're saying I've been shadow banned? The answer is a, a, a maybe. And here's the easiest way to, to answer that question. Go to your own analytics, right? So here's the Trust mm. Insights uh, analytics account, uh, Twitter account, right? And look at your, our engagement. And is our engagement unusual in, in some fashion, right? Is it is it up or is it down? Is it, you know, what's going on with it? Um you can uh, ex export all this data and make like really big uh, charts versions of this chart. Uh, here's what Trust Insights looks like since 2018 when we started our Twitter account, our engagement rate. There are periods here where our engagement is definitely lower, periods where it's, it's higher, but at no point does it go to zero. If I would, if if we uh, were truly, you know, shadow banned, you would expect to see. Uh, let me pull up a, a different example. This is the marketing over coffee Twitter account. Um, you can see there's a great big gap here where there's no engagement at all. Now that's because we weren't tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> John. Yeah, this is a very depressing graph overall. <laughs> well, no, no it, I mean, you can see it's not like, you know, last month you're talking 2010 to 2018. My account, quite honestly, would look very similar. I think I stood up my account in 2010 ish, but didn't really start making it active until, you know, trust insights. Yeah. That's right. totally us doing the placeholder there. <laughs> exactly. So you can see pretty clearly that you, if marketing over coffee account had been shadow banned for in this case, years, that's what it would look like. You would say like, Oh, mm -hmm. look, our, our engagement is nothing. No one's seeing our stuff. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're just in a vacuum. Um, here's well, Katie's account. You know, this oh, is you, you did pull there, mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's you could see, you know, nothing, 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 nothing. Selling 2018. So we start Trust Insights. Kay is like, all right, fine. I guess I got a tweet. <laughs> but again, but this doesn't tell you. Maybe I was just posting really crappy content for 10 years. <laughs> that's, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, that's what this is missing. Like, 
we can make assumptions, but it doesn't actually, because good content is subjective. And so maybe all I was doing was live tweeting bad Lifetime movies and nobody cared. Maybe it was just so terrible that nobody cared. Or maybe I was just telling people the kind of cereal I was eating for breakfast that morning. Exactly. And so the, this is what it would look like if your account had some kind of suppression on it, right? That, that, those big gulfs of just no engagement whatsoever. Your content's not being seen. Nobody knows it's there. Um, and, and, and nothing's happening. Now, it's, it's very interesting to look. You know, Katie's engagement rate has actually gone really, really well in the last four years. Uh, so Katie is a champion social media manager. Woo! Good really, for me. Yeah, you just trim that graph at 2018 and boom, yeah. business. I mean, exactly. it, but timing wise, it makes sense because I really didn't activate my account until I had a reason to. Um, I mean, I have been, and I will quote myself saying, I hate social media. I'm not good at it. Uh, but I understand its importance and its utility. And I will do it on behalf of the business. Exactly. So to answer the question, you know, have you been shadow banned again? Go into the tools that are provided to you and look at, you know, in this case, the Twitter for your own account will give you impression numbers, right? So mm -hmm. uh, here on Sunday, the 22nd, you know, Trust Insights had 26 impressions. We had no tweets. So I mean, that, that makes, makes logical sense. sense. Um, yeah, we had two tweets for 63 impressions on the 16th. We had um, no tweets on Friday, the 27th, but we had a lot of engagement because of other stuff was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's how to tell to tell if you if you're tweeting and you're getting no impressions you you might have been shadow banned which means that you don't have have any reach but this is uh apologies but this is just twitter like tiktok doesn't have great analytics linkedin doesn't have great analytics and so you know, how do you find out in a different context? Like, so, you know, Twitter has this analytics.twitter.com that uh, you can tie to your account and find out pretty quickly. But what about other platforms? Like, are you still just guessing or is there a way to find out? Oh, there's absolutely ways to find out, particularly if you are a creator on those platforms. So a lot of platforms have uh, not just um, individual uh analytics but if you're a creator you get extra stuff so for example here on linkedin uh linkedin if you turn on creator mode now you can look at your content performance so let's look at the last 90 days uh and this is impressions right so it, is my content being shown to people mm -hmm. um and and you know some sometimes it is sometimes it isn't at no point does this graph flatline you know like a, a cardiac patient going into arrhythmia it, it's pretty clearly I'm, I'm being seen. Uh, you can look, look at your engagements too to see if, if your content is landing with people, right? So there were definitely mm -hmm. periods of time here, like in November, where my content just didn't land. Mm. Um, was I shadow banned? No, I was putting out content nobody liked. <laughs> well, okay. So it sounds like step one, have I been shadow banned? Uh, you need to look at your analytics from that particular platform to see like, uh, did I put out crappy content or have I really been getting, you know, zero reach and engagement, zero impressions, zero engagement, but I've been posting like crazy. That probably means that you've been shadow banned for whatever reason. However, if you're still seeing a little bit of uh, activity, then that means that you probably need to double check if you're posting the right stuff to the right people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I think that it's, it's that simple. Now, I guess the next logical question is how do you, if, if you're not getting engagement, regardless of being banned or not, right? what do you do to fix it? Oh, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the million dollar question. Um, you know, what I would do is I would start to run some tests of different kinds of content. Um, you know, I would say like, do people engage more, uh, with videos or do people engage more with polls? You know, if I keep it really simple to a basic question, like pineapple on pizza, our, our old standby, are people going to engage with it? And I feel like those kinds of tests will start to tell you, I'm sure there's a way to look at your analytics to determine how to test, but my, that's what my gut would tell me to do. 
John, how about you? Yeah, you can totally do the, uh, you know, post a great picture of your dog. And boy, I think green is a terrible color. What do you think? You know, you can do stuff like that that just generates and spins all kinds of stuff. Um, and jumping on other threads too, like mm -hmm. reply uh, boosting and stuff like that. Those are, uh, because I didn't realize, like that's one thing that people actually get angry about is you can get banned from threads. You know, your replies don't show up. Like everything is normal on the stuff you publish, but your replies don't show up. And that can go from, because um, I always wondered where that more reply button comes from. That's not saying like, oh, we could only serve up 10 replies. It's, you've seen the 10 best replies. If you want to see the crappy ones, click here mm -hmm. and then we'll show you those. But um, yeah, jumping, you know, the whole news jacking thing does work. <clears throat> it does. Let's go back to last week too, right? If we know that, say, Andy Crestadina or Nancy Harhut or, or Nick Westergaard are people that we want to be interacting with, right? We want our stuff to be seen by them. We should be tagging them in our content, right? We should, we should have an understanding of who our network is and then be interacting with them on, on the appropriate network. We should be creating content about them. Our friend um, Carol does this with, phenomenally with her illustrations. She creates you know, these animations that feature people on the graph that she wants to interact with more, be seen with by more. And so yeah, it, it's, an, it's an easy thing. To what John was saying, Go into the social listening tool of your choice. Here's TalkWalker, for example. Choose the platform that you want to interact on. I'll choose Twitter here. I chose as a search term uh, Google Analytics, and I'm, I set a window of the last seven days. Here's the most engaged tweets on, on Google Analytics in the last seven days. What should we do? Retweet, reply, mm -hmm. and like. Right? That's, it's like, comment, share. That's, that's the, the magic formula for engagement. And a certain percentage of people, because people are predictable, will naturally like say, hey, thanks for retweeting me or whatever. And guess what? Now you've created that connection in the network graph to those nodes. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's funny because in the pre-show, we were talking about how I never see uh, Chris's posts in my Twitter feed. Uh, but I also don't engage with Chris Chris's posts on Twitter primarily because we work together and I talk to him every day. I don't also feel the need to then engage with his social media. But if we were seeing that my doing so would help with my engagement, his engagement, you know, then it would be something that, you know, we would start doing. But I think overall, like Chris and I don't engage with each other's posts on social media purely because we talk to each other all day long anyway. Yep, exactly. And so if I want to see more of Katie, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit retweet <laughs> and just go all the way down the stack here. Uh, anything that Katie's sharing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even know what he's replying to. to I have no idea. <laughs> read an article. Oh, that's exactly. fantastic. <laughs> you know, here's a... <laughs> Oopsie. It's true that that did happen. <laughs> and now what are we doing? We are feeding the mm -hmm. network, right? We are telling the network this person is important. This media is important. I want to see more of it. Um, some networks will even let you specify that. Um, Instagram and Facebook in particular say, you know, show these people first. Mm -hmm. um, and so if there are, if you're in sales, uh, if you're in a business development, guess what? your top 50 prospects should be in that list. Right? And I always want to see John Wall's posts first. And that way, that way I remember, like, comment, share, everything that John puts out that you know, within reason. Uh, like if it's a picture of like John's you know, plumbing work over the weekend, I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to like that toilet. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so, you know, Facebook does that too. And so it will ask you, do you want to see more or less posts like this or more or less from this person? And so I think what we're coming to is, you know, you, you know, the term shadow ban, like anything else, is sort of tossed around very loosely without a really good understanding of what it really means. And so I think that, you know, posters and creators on social media will use it in a way to sort of like manipulation's the wrong word, but like they'll sort of use it to try to get more engagement, like, hey, you know, I think I've been shadow banned. Can you engage with this to see if it's really true? And 
they're probably just trying to be like, hey, here's a great way to get people to pay attention. Or, you know, so you really don't really know. So I would say, you know, buyer beware. If you see people posting like that, they may just be looking to boost their numbers. Uh, someone who's really shadow banned, you wouldn't see their post, period. And so that's sort of like the gut check of, well, they're saying they've been shadow banned, but I'm still seeing their stuff. Exactly. Social networks, and this is the part that drives me crazy about people. Social networks do not have an incentive to have quiet users. They have an incentive mm -hmm. to have loud users, noisy people, controversial people, because that's what keeps people coming back. And that's what lets them show more ads, right? If nobody's posting, then you have less inventory to show ads on. You know, I, I, John was pointing out before the show, though, there's this rumor that Twitter is going to limit people who are not your verified members to seven tweets a day that is not in twitter's economic interest to make money right twitter mm -hmm. wants you to be verbose because a that's how you serve inventory and b we know from the uh, new management's tweets that <laughs> they measure activity like hey we had more tweets than ever right uh -huh. you know very simplistic me uh, measures but it tells you where that person's head is um and a doctor in a flesh that will help you find it but in terms of true volume like that's what they care about is we want more, more, more. So th it makes no even basic business sense to say, yeah, let's, let's, let's completely restrict people who are not paying um, so that we can have less activity, less avid inventory, and be able to sell less, fewer ads. So question, because I can sort of see how these dots could be connected, but I don't know if they're the right dots to connect. Um, is shadow banning something that only exists on a social media platform? So, for example, um, could someone say, I think my blog is being shadow banned from Google because it doesn't show up in search? People can make that claim. <laughs> but is that really? But obviously, that's not really what's happening. It's that it's not optimized correctly. It's not answering a useful question. There's no Google doesn't see that there's any value to showing this. Like, is that Google's version of shadow banning? In a sense, like we know that PageRank, which is was the original algorithm from you know, 1999, was a graph network. Right? Mm -hmm. that, it literally was this. The number of links going into a site um, indicate that you know that site has validity. If you're out there musing about you know whatever and, and shouting it to ether, and you've got your blog and no one links to it. Gosh, I can't imagine why Google wouldn't show that <laughs> in the search results, right? <laughs> because nobody thinks you're credible. And again, I know we're going to talk about this on an upcoming episode. Uh, when you look at the search quality rating guidelines that Google puts out and says, you know, here's what quality content looks like. Here's the, you know, how we, we make a lot of these judgments. The machine learning models that power these things take into account those networks. And if, if you are... You know, like in this example, this graph, if you're way out here in the, you know, in the, in the suburbs and nobody's talking about you, you don't have, from a, a mechanistic perspective, you don't have expertise, you don't have experience, you don't have authority, you don't have trustworthiness. Are you shadow banned? I mean, I guess in the sense that Google does not think you're credible and therefore is not going to show your stuff. But is it because Google hates you? No, it's because you're not doing what Google's told you to do. And so I feel like we keep coming back to the same action of, number one, you need to understand the rules and regulations of the platform that you're trying to post on, whether that be a search engine or a social media platform, or probably even uh, a private community where you can be muted or banned. So number one, make sure you're following the guidelines and you're playing the game, following someone else's rules. And number two, just post good content, post content that your audience cares about and you shouldn't have an issue. Um, and then if you are, for some reason, shadow banned, um, then the way to get yourself out of shadow banning purgatory is to start to engage with people that you care about, that you want in your network. So if I was shadow banned on Twitter, I would then look to Chris, your account and John, your account and be like, hey guys, I'm going to start you know, re-engaging, going to start sharing and, you know, commenting and liking so that I can get myself out of purgatory. And there's a, and number three is network, network with other people, do stuff that helps validate you. So for example, um, 
this whole warrior nun thing that I you know been a part of. What happens when when you're a part of a group? Look at how many people are are tagging me into stuff that I'm not even posting. It's not I'm not even publishing this stuff. I just got tagged into it, and suddenly you have all these mentions, all these network connections, mm -hmm. hundreds of them a day. At this point, I could probably do pretty much anything that was not an outright violation of Schwerter's rules. And my account would be fine because you have all these incoming signals saying, hey, this account is super valid because everybody's referencing it. There's a lot of activity within the network that is that are, are positive signals. So you it, to what you're saying, Katie, good content, yeah, is important. But so is the network of people to support you. And this is why you know, we keep emphasizing over and over again, your community is so vital if you're if you don't have as a brand as a market if you do not have a community you are hosed because you will be that little dot on the outside yelling into the ether right mm -hmm. you will not be marketing profs you will not be lee odin you will not be katie robert on the network because no one's talking about you build that community right you know think about the the analytics for marketers slack group right which we have over uh, here it's 3,000 people. What happens when we post a piece of content to that? What happens when we ask people to tweet about it? What happens when we ask people to share it? We, we create that authority, these signals in mm -hmm. these algorithms that this is valid. And the more that we can uh, leverage our community and have our community leverage us and participate in their stuff, the better we all do. And I know it goes totally against literally everything I believe in, but you can't do it alone, right? You, you cannot do marketing alone anymore because the way these algorithms work, they are driven by people's behavior, a crowd's behavior, and you need a crowd. Good luck, Chris. I know how I know. much of a people person you are. I know. It's, it, I'm, I'm delighted. I think you should keep me around a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> Another part of this too, though, is how... Mo especially on the search side, like they don't have to do shadow banning because they just create enough gates to the content. You know, you, your content needs to basically score high enough to be shown and shared, right? If your stuff is junk, you're not going to accumulate the points. Whereas the idea with a shadow ban is at some point, a finger gets put on the scale and is like, okay, no, your content is doing well enough, but we're going to throttle it and not show it. But and so there's been two big pieces of that. One is just the timeout box. We see that used all the time of just like, okay, for two weeks, you can't post and your stuff's not seen for two weeks. Uh, but then the other one is to actually, um, you know, get kicked off the platform or be sent home and, you know, not be able to come back on. And unfortunately, like both of those require human intervention. And that's why we see, you know, the network's doing such a poor job of it. And they basically fall back to this point of, well, it, we can't guarantee it's not going to be seen by anyone. Like it's going to go out and the people that follow them and want to see that stuff will still see it, but we can at least try and throttle the spread to the rest of the world. But mm -hmm. is there anything out there as far as, you know, once you've been thrown in the penalty box for something, I mean, basically you can appeal and say, reinstate my account if it's reinstated, or if you're locked out for two weeks, you just have to sit and watch the clock. Is there anything else that can really be done on any of the networks? It depends on the network. Um, you know, think about the OG shadow ban. The OG shadow ban is you're a spammer and we're not going to deliver your email, right? Mm -hmm. So you can send all the email you want, but uh, you're on every blacklist that there is. <laughs> and so you basically have to burn your server down and then and buy a new one because you're, you're never getting your email delivered again. Um, it's all algorithmic. So it, to my knowledge, anything that's using a graph network, particularly a temporal graph network, which we talked about last week, over time, those embeddings that are time-based fade away, right? It's like a half-life. It's like a decay. Uh, eventually, those thresholds uh, raise up and you might start getting seen again. The mm -hmm. express way out of that is to the best of your ability, you know, make sure that you've got the, that insurance policy of a strong network of people that are constantly engaging with your stuff so that you keep those signals, the, you keep the, the volume of positive signals far above any negative signals um, and, and you stay ahead of the algorithm. Well, I mean, I think, I think that kind of covers that. I mean, the, the big takeaways are you can look at your analytics to understand if you've been shadow banned. 
Um, you know, if there's no reach, if there's no engagement, if there are no impressions to the things that you're posting, uh, you may have been shadow banned. And then, you know, the way to start to get out of that is to uh, start to engage with other posts. Like you posting while you're shadow banned, it's not going to change anything. You engaging, you liking, uh, you resharing will help get you uh, out of that purgatory place. And also just make sure you didn't violate the regulations of whatever platform you've been banned on. Exactly. And, you know, build your network in the whatever format and wherever it is, whether it's a Slack community, whether it's your email list, whether it's on multiple social networks, build that community of people around you because that's what will provide the positive signals to algorithms to to let you back in. So if you mm -hmm. don't have that community, it's going to be a lot harder. Um, that's, that's the way it is. If you look at Twitter, for example, you look at some of the people who are posting stuff, you're like, wow, that's really not okay. But you look at the metrics on their posts, you know, hundreds of thousands of likes and tens of thousands of retweets like, oh, well, clearly mm -hmm. they have their network and that network acts as a, a, you know, a, a protection against their account just getting canned, even though they're, you know, saying ridiculous things like the earth is square and flat instead of round and a <laughs> sphere. Like, well, apparently you've got enough people to agree with you that, that um, the, the logic of the network of the algorithm overrules basic common sense and reality. <laughs> well, you can't fix stupid. You sure can, but you can monetize the daylights out of it. Thanks for tuning in this week. <laughs> we will see you all next time. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you're watching it. For more resources and to learn more, check out the Trust Insights podcast at trustinsights.ai slash TI podcast and our weekly email newsletter at trustinsights.ai slash newsletter. Got questions about what you saw in today's episode? Join our free Analytics for Marketers Slack group at trustinsights.ai slash analytics for marketers. See you next time.